moved to Flowood in the summer of 2009. And after moving here, one of the things I really wanted to do was get involved with a church. And I had previously visited Pine Lake before for a New Year's service and really fell in love with the message and what the church had to offer. Uh, you know, I'd been single, I'd say three and a half or so years, give or take, and wasn't looking for anybody necessarily. Um, it was uh, kind of had the mindset it'll, it'll happen when it's supposed to. It was definitely at the stage that wouldn't mind meeting somebody, um, but was comfortably being single and and whatnot. But anyway, uh, started coming to church on uh, Sundays and then more so on Wednesdays. A lot of times my roommates would come move, come move me, but uh, you know a lot of times they would work late and they couldn't come. So I would say a good bit of the time I was coming by myself. So in August of 2009, I decided to make my first Wednesday evening visit to Pine Lake. And I came here, came alone, and thought I would sneak inside and sneak a back row seat. No one would ever notice me walking in. So that Wednesday that I came, uh, I walked in and tried to find a place to sit. And as I was scanning the empty seats, I happened to see a guy wearing green scrubs sitting alone. Uh, came to church like always and uh, sat in my normal spot and uh, noticed this good looking blonde girl and walk in and I was like, huh. Now, I noticed this guy because I thought he looked really good, but I wasn't here to be looking at guys. I was here for church. And uh, just, you know, I told myself, I said, I'm going to keep my mind, you know, keep my mind on the sermon, keep focused, you know, don't be. Going after, going after that in the sermon. And and I really didn't think anything of it for the rest of the night. And I uh, paid attention to church. So anyway, didn't think much about it and got home and, you know, went to work. And I was working part-time job at, at that time and uh, came back the, the next Wednesday and sat in my regular spot. And lo and behold, it was this good-looking blonde girl again. And I said, I think that's the same same girl from, from last week. I walked in and decided I'd, I was comfortable where I sat the last week and I'd sit in the same seat again. And as I was walking to that seat, I happened to notice sitting in his same spot was that same guy that I saw wearing scrubs the week before. Went on, I was like, you know, get your mind on the sermon and, and whatnot, but. Now he caught my eye again and I tried not to think too much of it, but I did find it a little funny how we both came and we both sat in the same seat two weeks in a row. The third Wednesday came and same scenario. I came in, sat in the same seat, a row over from this guy who sat in the exact same seat he had been sitting in the previous two weeks. You know, I remember coming in, I was thinking, uh, I was like, well, if that girl will be here again, but didn't, you know, just didn't, didn't dwell on it or anything. But got in here Wednesday night, sat in my regular spot, and sure enough, that there good looking girl was again. and. This time I really started getting a little bit more curious, but there again, you know, it's like, you know, you're in church, let's, you know, let's not, let's not go there right now. And Now this time I really started to notice, and I really thought he looked good and he was cute. And I kind of started to think maybe I should introduce myself to this guy. I wanted to say something, but um, just didn't do it. Every time I thought about introducing myself to him, I got pretty nervous. So I decided I wasn't going to say anything at that point come along it was the fourth come up on the fourth Wednesday so we're looking at probably right at a month here and I wondered if I recognized this guy every week sitting alone he had to surely recognize me coming in by myself and sitting alone I was thinking you know you know Grant what nothing wrong with meeting a girl at church and maybe you should say something and so I told myself on up that Wednesday night that if she you know was around that I'm on at least trying to introduce myself or something so one of the things that I decided to do was really get plugged into Pine Lake. The, this church is so large that you really have to find somewhere to get plugged into to get involved. And so one of the first places that I looked to do that was on Pine Lake's singles page on Facebook. So I got on Facebook and I joined the um, Pine Lake singles page and I was looking through the, the group member pictures to see if I recognized anyone else that was part of this Pine Lake group. And I came across a very familiar face. 
and I quickly recognized it as that guy that sits a row away from me every Wednesday. And the good thing about that was I was finally able to put a name with the face, and I saw that his name was Grant Myrick. And I was thinking, well, you know, you don't want to be cheesy at church, you know, hey, how's it going, you know, and all this kind of uh, nonsense. The following Wednesday, I came into church, and there he was again, sitting in his same seat that I was so used to seeing him sit in. And this time, I secretly knew his name. I knew a little bit of information about him. I told myself, I was like, Grant, this girl is, is here at church. Just, just say something. You know, you're a guy. You're supposed to be the man in the, in the, in the deal. You know, just say something. What's the worst you're going to do? You know, I can't believe a guy just said hello to me. I mean, that's, that's not going to happen. So just man up and, you know, say something. I decided that I needed to pray about this guy. There was something really strong in my heart. When I thought about him, he, he wouldn't get out of my mind. I knew that there was something special about him. And so I decided to pray to God that if this man was someone that should be in my life and was someone that I should meet, that I, I prayed a specific prayer that he would make the first move and he would introduce himself. But here again, I was like, you're in church, you know, just, you know, if you're going to say something, you can do it after, but just get your mind on the sermon and what, what he has to say. And But I was kind of thinking during that throughout the sermon, what were, what was I going to say? And there again, I didn't want to be, you know, cheesy about it. And there was a guest preacher, his name is Jason Smith. He actually been, he had actually been preaching a couple of times, and but he wasn't a regular as of yet and um, uh, doing some internship here through the church. But he preached that night, and I thought about it. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say, hey, do you remember who that was preaching tonight? So I was actually working up a white lie in church. Um, so that was kind of ridiculous, I guess. But I had butterflies in my stomach, and my heart was pounding. I so desperately wanted to introduce myself to him, but I knew that I had prayed a specific prayer. I was not going to do it. The church ended, and we were kind of walking down the same time, and out of my peripheral vision I could see her kind of to my left and I was like just say something. I kept thinking just say something just introduce yourself that's it. So we made it out of the church made it into the parking lot. I could still see her my, my left and I was like just say something my heart just just going a mile a minute. I heard the words. And I looked over and said excuse me and she's like yeah. I was like do you remember who that was preaching tonight and she's like yeah it's Jason Smith um, he's a guest preacher you know it's a really good sermon and I was like yeah it really was I really enjoyed the sermon and I was so excited he had made the first move and I immediately took that as God answered my prayer well that simple question turned into a 30 minute conversation in the parking lot you know where you're from where'd you go to college etc stuff like that of course I didn't share with him at this point that I kind of already knew who he was and knew a little bit about his background just from Facebook stalking him next thing you know we're one of the only couple cars in the in the parking lot and uh, so it's you know kind of winding down the conversation and I don't I don't really consider myself a forward type of guy, but uh, it was about 7.45-ish or so, and I was getting hungry, and I, I think I actually said it. I was like, uh, you know, Rachel, I, I'm not trying to be forward. I said, but it's getting kind of late. You want to grab a bite to eat and continue the conversation? So we decided to go to Cheddar's. It was my choice, which is funny because I don't even like Cheddar's, but out of my nervous, nervousness, it was the first place I thought of. We both don't like Cheddar's at all, nothing against the Cheddar's team or whatever, but we don't really like that restaurant. But anyway, went there and uh, had a great meal and the conversation kept going. And uh, next thing I know, I looked down at my, my phone and it was, I'd say right at 10 o'clock or a little bit after. And He asked if he could have my number. And from that moment on, that is when our relationship really began. Grant picked me up the following Friday for lunch. We had a lunch date at Mama Hamill's Buffet. I mentioned on the way out, I said, hey, do you ever go to church on Sundays? And she said, I sure do. And I've been, you know, going here recently. I said, well, you care if I pick you up this Sunday? We'll, we'll go. And she said, oh, that'd be great. And that's really where our relationship took off. And uh, from that point on, 
every Sunday and every Wednesday, he would pick me up to come to Pine Lake. And that was three years ago, October, so. I think I've always kind of knew that Grant was special to me and more than just a boyfriend. And I knew he was someone that I would eventually marry. I think I knew that probably before Grant did. But when I truly knew this man was sent from God as my husband to be, I uh, was probably in the past year. Grant's dad had been sick. He had had two heart attacks. He had type one diabetes and he was back in the hospital again after his second heart attack last summer. And he was at the hospital and I remember Grant saying to his dad, You've been in here so long, you need a haircut. Your hair's your hair and your beard are getting a little too long. We need to take care of that. So Grant, the next time we went to visit him at the hospital, he brought in a pair of clippers and a toothbrush. And uh, I sat there and I watched Grant shave his dad's beard. And I watched him shave his, his head and give him a haircut. And I watched him brush his teeth. And I think in that moment, you know, sitting in the hospital room, watching him do that, that's when it really, it really hit me that this man would give his life for those that he loves. And this man is truly what the definition of a godly man is. So I decided I wanted to capture that moment. So what I did was I took my cell phone out. Grant had no idea. And I took a picture of Grant doing that for his dad, taking care of his dad and, and cutting his hair and brushing his teeth. And I quietly took the picture. Grant never knew I did it, but I always kind of kept it because I, I knew I wanted to give it to him as a gift, um, just to show him, you know, this is the moment that I knew that you were the one for me. So I took that picture and um, unfortunately, in October of last year, um, Grant's father passed away. And it was just another kind of one of those you know, life experiences um, that wasn't that great. Um, seems like after we got engaged, we had a lot of ups and downs, and this was definitely a down period for both of us individually and together as a couple. Um, but I remember during that time, uh, the picture that I took, and I wanted to share it with Grant because I felt like it would um, kind of lift his spirits and and be a good thing for him to see. So on Christmas day, I decided to wrap that picture up of him taking care of his dad and give it to him as a Christmas gift. And so we've got that on display in the house now. And it's something that we can both look at and remember uh, what it means to be a giving person and to give of yourself and to be a servant for others because um, that's, that's what I saw in Grant that day. Like Rachel said, with my dad, obviously he's not physically here, but um, we did a, a little something with a candle at the front of the stage in remembrance of him. So, um, as my cousin said as the, at his eulogy, I think he'll have the best seat in the house today. And um, uh, saying that, we want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, this has been a, a long time coming. We've dated over th over three years, I guess, and. Uh, it's finally here, and it's surreal, it's exciting, um, it's fun, and it's all those emotions uh, mixed up. I think we're honestly, we're just ready to get to Hawaii, um, but uh, we've both never been there, so we're looking forward to that. And um, Anyway, we're so glad to have everybody here and our families. We thank um, both sides, the Shannons and my mom and Myrick's side and everybody else that's helped out with friends and Turney Brothers are driven down and... Um, people come from out of town, out even out of state. Um, I think we've got a lot of states represented here in the audience, and so we're thankful for so, so much for everybody um, joining us um, today. And uh, it really is a blessing, and uh, we're looking forward to what God has in the store. And we ask that you, as our friends and family, lift us up in prayer. And um, you know, we just thank you again for, for joining us in this in this uh, celebration.